Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to quickly show you how to make or how to add slicers and timelines to your pivot charts. Now these things make it so you can filter uh, graphical images like this, visualizations really quick and fast, and get some really cool insights, you know, off of your data. So obviously, first you have to have a pivot chart. That's what this is right here, and next to this is a pivot table. In the background here, you can't really see it, but this is my pivot chart. So this is a chart that shows data from a uh, pu free public data set, the bike share data from California. It's from the University of California Irving's or Irving's uh, data science department. Um, and basically it contains data from 2011 and 2012. I went and did a, uh, a forecast, future looking forecast that goes into 2013, which is right here in this colorful area right here. So what I'm going to do, I want to, instead of having to, you know, resize this and make this chart bigger and smaller and stuff like that, or to put in a dashboard where you don't want to resize it at all and you want to have the options to be able to filter on the sides, what you do is you click on your pivot chart like this, then you go to insert, and then you'll see slicers and timelines. So then I would pick slicer. Now, if you aren't clicked in the middle of this, let's say I'm clicked over here, right? I'm not clicked inside of my uh, pivot chart. Watch what happens it's now going to ask me to connect to a data source or another graph that's connected to a data set or something like that. I don't need that. I've already got it right here. All I got to do is click on this. You'll see these little circles. It means you're inside it. And then I just click on slicer. Now I can pick from any of the fields in here. You want to pick fields that have a minimal number of uh, things to choose from. So you don't want to pick something that's going to have a hundred different um, choices for the for people to scroll through your users and stuff so for a typical data analysis task where I'm going to create a dashboard or something like that I would create let's say a month and a year in this case so we got two slicers right here one two and what I want to show you next is see these have minimal choices this one's got a few more it's got 12 it's got 12 months of the year this one's just got three because we got three years basically or a little bit of 2013 2012 and 2011 First thing you're going to notice at the very bottom is these things called blank. I don't have any blank values. I don't have a reason for a blank value. You may. It depends on what you're doing. But if you don't, you probably want to get rid of these. So what you do is you right click on this, right click on their slicer, click on slicer settings, and then go straight here to this box right here where it says hide items with no data. And then you do the same thing with the next one. See, because if you click on it like this, you see no data. It's blank. So you got to release the filter. So we click on that, slicer settings, same thing, hide it and uh, hit OK. And then what we want to do is we want to resize these. So you want to bring these up so that they're about like that. You don't want to have too much white space in there. If you make it too small, watch what happens. It automatically goes to where you can choose them like this. You don't really want to do that if you don't have to. The one above this is a little bigger, so it doesn't matter if that's in there or not. It's fine. Okay, and now you see the blanks are gone. Next, what I want to do is I want to choose the color. So you click on one of these, and you go up here to Slicer Styles, under Options, under Slicer Tools. Click here, and you can pick any of these colors or create your own. And so I'm going to create this one right here. I, used to, I like this one. This one's not bad. It's a little bit bright. I usually use this one uh, for users when I'm doing this. And uh, I usually like to pick, if it's for the same one, I keep the same color. That way people know this slicer's for this graph, this slicer's for this graph, and so on, for a different graph. So that's how that works, and then I'm going to show you how they work. So now you're looking at this data. Let's say I just want 2011. That's just 2011 data right there. That's it. I just took out 2012 and 2013. What if I want to see 2013? There's my uh, forecasting information. That's how it looks different because it's got upper and lower bounds. Maybe I want 2012. There it is right there. Now keep in mind, if I go up here and I pick month two, I now have month two but of 2012 because I never released this filter. So make sure when you go from one to another that you release the filter. Otherwise, you won't get all years or all the components that you'd want to from it. And also, another word of the wise is do not give users uh, more than one slicer unless you really know them well, then maybe two, but that's it per graph. And the reason being is they'll it's not necessarily that they'll get confused, but they'll give it to another person, maybe their boss, and they're not going to explain to them that they left a filter on. And then their boss is going to go to their boss, give them data that's wrongly filtered, and it's going to come back looking bad on that person. You don't want that to happen to your users. You want to protect them from themselves. 
So limit it to one, maybe two. I would rarely, I rarely ever use two slicers for when I give it to the user. I'm just doing it here to give you an example. Okay, so I've released the, the uh, filters. To release the filters, just look at them once you've clicked one. See how the filter is held right there? So you just click, it'll have a red X, just click on that and it releases it. Next, what I want to do is show you, this is a, uh, has a date range in here. So what that enables me to do is the timeline. Now again, if I click over here and I'm not clicked in here and I click on timeline, I get the same thing I got with the slicer that it's asking me for a data set or to be hooked up to a connection in a workbook or something. So instead, click in here, make sure you're clicked in here, not into your slicer, into the actual pivot chart, and then click timeline. Then in the timeline, what's nice is it's only going to pick the fields, it's only going to produce the fields for you to choose from that have date ranges in them. So if you have a date range and it's not in date format, it won't show up in here. So you have to go back to your data, right click on it, change the format to date, and then come back in here and it'll be fine. So just click here. I'm selecting this only one to select. That's date today is the name of the uh, uh, field for the dates. I click OK. And here is my timeline. And I'll just put it right there. And now the interesting thing with timeline is it gives you the whole range of all your dates. Now keep in mind when you have anything that goes into the into another year, so like 2013, I've only got data that goes into January, but it's going to it's going to give me to choose from the entire year of 2013. So if I pick September, I have no data because I know I don't have any in this uh, data set here. But what I can do is I can release that brings back everything as long as I've released my other filters here and then what I can do what's really cool is I can go and say let's say I want to see uh, November so let's select, select there through January of 2013 so that's 2012 November through there and it shows me the before and then the forecast in this case with this uh, data set which is kinda neat but you would look at this and say, well, we're not doing too well. We've kind of had a, a, a dive down here. We haven't come up, and we're just mosing along. So you may want to see more data. This is what's neat about the timeline. I can go and stay, say, let's say I want to go back to July of that year. Now I can increase a little bit, and there you go. You can see now it's kind of flattened out, and then it came down. Well, what if I want to go back further? Let's say I want to go back to January of 2012. I just grab it here, bring that here. And there, that's from January. Now you can see it, it grew, flattened out, came back down, but it's back to about where it was. And I can go back even farther if I want, or I can bring the whole set back. I can pick three dates in November if I want. I can pick anything I want here. I just have to remember to release this filter when I'm done here. That's what's neat about the uh, timeline. And it's different than the slicers, but they each serve their purpose. A lot of times I'll use a lot of slicers. I don't use a whole lot of timelines because I tend to do data that has uh, many, many uh, years of data in uh, or data points, and it's not as popular for my users. It could be for yours. It could be something that they love. I use, tend to use slicers a lot. I have sometimes used uh, timelines, though. I don't use them together, and again, limit yourself to just one per graph, especially if you're doing a dashboard. You might have four or five or six graphs here. You don't want to have every single one of them have your timelines or slicers. Maybe one or two top ones that they might want to see a range or change how they look at before or after or something like that of a campaign or something like that. So that's how that works. And then I can click here. Same thing as I did with these guys. I can go and pick a color. It could be anything. It could be purple. It could be red. Whatever I want. And that's so that's basically here's your uh, slicers. Here's your timelines. They work together. Now keep in mind, see I've got that filter hooked on here so if I were to go here and let's see that's 2011 2012 let's pick 2013 oh we have no data at all why because we've already pre filtered it here so you have to release a filter to see what you want to see in another one okay that's how that works so it's a great way of filtering visually for your users if you use it wisely don't use a whole lot of them they'll love it uh, you have to show them probably how to use it and then make sure they understand how to release the filters because they could easily go and put something like this or this on here and give it to the users and the users are looking at this and saying well I don't see anything for 2011 um, this is all the data we got for this blah 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 no it's not you have to release the filter so you can see the whole picture generally when I give it to a user I have all filters released and then I give it to them and I tell them what they can do with it and then usually 
a lot of users don't actually even use the slicer but some do and the ones that do are good at it and they know exactly what they're looking for so they might want a timeline and they might say uh, I just want November to uh, February and they're there and they can see their lows and highs and whatever it is they're looking for obviously this is not the prettiest graph in the world I did not go and change this to count and forecast count and this is upper bound lower bound but you know what I'm talking about here this showed you exactly how to use slicers exactly how to use timelines you're all set from there just remember to release your filters when you're done and don't overdo it with how many you have you know keep it simple thanks again for watching I hope you found this helpful please subscribe and like I've got a lot of great videos coming that are just as good or better than this and then on top of that I've got a lot of great videos on my channel be sure and check out my channel and see all the great helpful videos in there on Excel, Alteryx, data science, data analysis data wrangling you name it it's in there and I'm going to be building and throwing a lot more stuff in there. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.